We are in the Utah Valley College at the Fulton Library. Um, this is a library though, so shh, gotta be quiet. This is the Roots of Knowledge um, stained glass gallery, which it took 15 years to build. Yeah, I'm honestly gonna be spending a lot more time here than I thought. I'm gonna show you guys some of the coolest parts of this mosaic. Yeah, I'm not going to lie guys, this is one of the most incredible galleries I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, if you ever get a chance to come out near Provo, or in Orem, <laughs> this is my friend. I'm Ellen. Ellen, this is my friend Ellen. Uh, so they're outside of Orem, We're in Orem and it's Utah, Utah Valley, Valley, Valley University. University, not State College. Yes. Sorry about that. That's <laughs> okay. my apologies. Just this is to make amazing sure. here. Yeah, we're very yeah. lucky to have it. Another thing too is like the faces, the faces yeah. on these people, like I was looking at uh, like the Dalai Lama and Gandhi, mm -hmm. and they're just like, the faces are amazing on it. I was just surprised like at how much their likeness is captured. Oh man, look at Churchill right there. Just down here, this little piece is a $5 bill from 1777. That's crazy. <laughs> Isn't that insane? That is insane. This place just keeps getting cooler and cooler. So, um, the tour guide lady that was showing us around told us to download the app. And it's this crazy intuitive app that you can literally zoom in on any of the windows, any of the items, and so like this right here, that is Melerdotningen, <laughs> which is the Golden Hall of Stockholm. Uh, it's a mosaic in Stockholm City Hall, and this is at 30 Rockefeller Plaza. Um, it's a statue by a German sculptor. Yeah, this is just cool. This is like, I can spend literally weeks here. <laughs> In just a few hundred feet, I walked through the birth of our people and every single age of mankind. So how can any of us say that we are personally responsible for any accomplishment while standing on the graves of humans far more noble and innovative than we could ever hope to be? Are we so short-sighted to say that any triumph our hands created were done entirely ourselves? Aren't our victories made possible by those before us who had all humankind in heart and mind? It is here we must learn that all we do, we do to all. That since the beginning of time, it has always been a collective effort, which we are a very, very small part of. All right, I recognize that statue. That is the statue that they built over the dock in Alexandria, the ancient city. Alexander the Great founded along, I forget which river, but yeah, they had this giant statue and underneath the legs is where all the boats would sail. And a cool fact about Alexandria is Alexander the Great, he had a complete monopoly on knowledge. Any boat or any ship that sailed into Alexandria, if they carried books, they had to claim them and Alexander the Great would take the originals and make copies for the owners to take with them, but the originals went to the Library of Alexandria. So he literally had a complete monopoly on all knowledge in the land. He just wanted it to be a uh, just a metropolis and a utopia of knowledge and learning. And yeah, if there was any time in history that I could live in, besides today, of course, it would be in Alexandria. It was in like. 100 AD and they had robotics, they had coin-operated drink machines, they had the first steam engine there. Just insane. So my question to you, fellow human, is how are you spending the life that billions have died building for you?